All right, guys, Jameson and Alex here. Today, we're going to be talking about the Graft Knight Fighter from the Lore of Aethera Kickstarter. This thing is crazy. It's and so it, wild. And it has a special place in my heart because I've been working on something similar for a very long time. So I'll just get that out of the way. If you're new to the channel or the series, what we're going to do is go through all the abilities gained in the subclass. Then we're going to rate the Role play, combat, and synergy based on how the abilities gained in the subclass improve on the base class abilities. Bingo. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe to be entered in our D&D Beyond Players Bundle giveaway. Free stuff is wonderful. All that being said, let's get right into it. Starting off, we're going to get some bonus proficiencies at level 3 with medicine. And you can treat any D20 roll of a 9 or lower as a 10, so reliable talent, yeah. when making a medicine check. Then we're also going to get our flesh grafter ability which is what the whole thing is going to be built around you can perform an hour long surgery and graft up to two body parts onto yourself either by replacing your own equivalent or simply adding them in tandem the body part must be still whole come from a corpse that is still largely intact and if not preserved in some way be grafted onto you within 24 hours of the corpse's time of death Additionally, the creature you take a body part from must be a humanoid beast, aberration, dragon, fey, giant monstrosity, or plant-type creature. So you can attach another graft onto your body at level 7, 10, and 15. The appearance of each graft remains the same, though its size is changed, if need be, to fit according to the body. So you know, if you happen to kill a, you know, adult black dragon and you want its Breath weapon. Mm, we'll get there. We'll get there. The head size would like... I imagine being on your back like a turret. Like you attach yeah. the head to your back and you would lean forward. And yeah, right. Be Blastoise up in here. <laughs> Tangent. Uh, I couldn't help it. It was, it was, too, it was way too easy. Uh, for example, if a dragon's eye is grafted... I went with a fun, much more fun <laughs> idea of the weapon. Of the head itself. The appearance remains that of a dragon's eye, though its size is reduced. Fit. If you remove one of your own body parts... To, to attach this new graft, you may reattach it later on so long as you preserved your original body part while it is not attached to you. Unless specified otherwise, a graft can be selected only once. The following parts are available to you when you attach a graft. Yes, so the first option is natural armament. You can graft a creature's weapon attack to yourself, such as a claw, bite, or slam. This attack deals 1d6 plus either your strength or dex mod in the same damage type while it was still attached to its original owner. If the creature's attack had a secondary effect, you do not gain it. Right. This graft may be selected multiple times, and I, I will make a note on this, I believe is the intention, because it's yeah. a little bit gray here. Uh, it says, each time it is selected, you can improve the damage die of this attack to the next die size, gain an additional weapon attack, or gain an existing armament's secondary effect so long as it is non-magical and forces a creature to make a strength, dex, or con check, such as a wolf's bite or a giant scorpion sting. The DC is 8 plus your constitution modifier plus your proficiency. An armament that doesn't have its damage die increased has the light weapon property. All weapon attacks are treated as magical. So I think the thought with this one, just to quickly get this out here right now, is uh, it says each time it's selected, you can increase the damage die. I believe that one is the one that you can take multiple times. Right. Because the other two are gain additional weapon attack, yeah. Which, uh, if you took m five times this, I don't think the intention is to give you five extra attacks. I no. think you can only get the extra attack one time. Yes. Uh, maybe per, maybe you said per uh, graft on there, if yeah. you want to get really technical with it. Um, and then the existing secondary effect, obviously there's only one secondary effect, so if you keep taking it, you're not going to get multiple secondary effects because yes. there's the one secondary effect. So, uh, depending on how your DM words that, I think the most logical would be you can get either an upgraded damage die mm -hmm. or an extra attack one time or the secondary effect one time. So yeah. you could keep taking the damage die, keep growing that, or you take the other options once. It would be my interpretation as a DM. Also, you have choices of wings. You can graft a creature's wings to yourself, granting you a fly speed equal to your speed. Wearing heavy armor reduces this speed by half, but you do get to keep flying of some variety. Mm. This craft can only be selected if the original wings come from a creature of medium size or larger, so there's no killing a small... Uh, sparrow and then right. getting to the fly. <laughs> Gills will let you breathe underwater. You also have toughened skin. You graft a creature's tough hide scales or skin onto your own, giving you a plus one bonus to your AC. This graft can only be taken from a creature with a natural armor bonus to their AC. Right. So most times your DM would know 
it, it should say on the monster stat block if it has natural armor or not. Right. So that would be a prerequisite. That's right. Uh, another option is sensory. You graft a sensory organ onto yourself. If the organ grants its owner blind sight, dark vision, or tremor sense, you gain this sense out to 30 feet. If you already possess these senses, they increase in range by 30 feet. Alternatively, you may choose to enhance your existing senses instead. By doing so, when you make a perception check, you can roll a d4 and add the number rolled to the ability check. Yep. So you get to learn one of those three new senses, or extend them, or you just get basically guidance on all your perception. Then, as Alex mentioned earlier, there is the breath weapon option, yeah. which you can graft a creature's breath weapon organ inside yourself, giving yourself its breath attack. When grafting this organ, you may choose for it to target a 30-foot cone or 60-foot line, and each creature in the area of the breath weapon's area must make a saving throw, the type of which is determined by the original save when it was still attached. The DC is equal to 8 plus your con mod plus your proficiency. The creature takes 3d6 damage on a failed save or half as much on a success. The damage increases by 1d6 at 6th, 9th, 12th, 15th, and 18th level. So with that, you're going to have up to 8d6 potentially at level yeah. 18. It's a fireball's damage on a breath weapon. Yeah. Last two choices are going to be tail. Uh, you can grab the creature's tail onto yourself, and you're able to make acrobatics checks with advantage. You are also able to grab with this tail, but you are unable to manipulate objects or use weapons with it. The last one, bones. A trickier graft, but one most invaluable. You graft the bones of tougher creatures to take the place of yours. You gain an additional number of hit points equal to your fighter level. Level 7, we have Predator's Approach. The memory of flesh joins with your own. Distinct but familiar in the same way that blood is to an animal without ever knowing the word for it. You get to choose one of two options. The first is Pride Begets. Arrogance. You gain proficiency in intimidation and may use your con mod in place of charisma when making intimidation checks. If you're already proficient, you add your proficiency bonus twice when making intimidation checks. Or the second option is praise clothing. You are able to suppress your grafts, hiding them within your body and under layers of skin and muscle, forcing bone to sink in and limbs to bend in new natural ways in an aching full minute. While suppressed, you do lose any benefits of the current grafts unless otherwise specified. You're able to reveal and regain use of all of your grafts as an action you were able to reveal and regain use of one graft as a reaction. So if you really needed to pop out a breath weapon, for example, as a surprise attack, reaction, breath weapon. Otherwise, Which is just really nifty. <laughs> otherwise, uh, yeah, you're going to have just all these weird things hanging off your body all the time. Yeah. Which Again, would make sense for the intimidation. Yeah, but for if you're trying to not be so completely obvious that you're an absolute freak and mutant, <laughs> yeah. uh, you have the ability to suppress your graph, which is a good thing Yes, for terms of RPGs. Definitely for social interactions. Yes. Uh, at 10, we get Renewal of Flesh. You gain an additional use of your second win feature. When you use your second win feature, you can end any or all of the following conditions currently affecting you. Blinded, deafened, frightened, paralyzed, poisoned, and stunned. Yeah. Great buff to your second win feature, besides you can do it an extra time. Right. At 15, we also have Their Hearts as Yours. The continued tinkering and grafting upon yourself has fortified your heart and body. You gain resistance to necrotic and poison damage. Additionally, your constitution score is increased by 2, and your maximum is now mm. 22. I'll take it. All, all the mores better <laughs> for all of your abilities that mess with your constitution modifier for your saving throws and things. Absolutely wonderful. Yep. So before we get onto the capstone, ah, I want to give you a little bit more details about the Kickstarter. Yeah. This and by the way, this capstone is ridiculous. So, <laughs> so, so make sure you don't silly. miss that. So with the Kickstarter, Aethercraft rules for crafting new kinds of items, mm -hmm. 100 plus pages for the setting, lore, things that go along with that. Also, you get 200 plus pages of an adventure, 13 plus animated scenes, and you might say animated scenes. This is from Alchemy RPG. If you're not familiar, it has kind of like a similar thing to like a tabletop uh, kind of simulator, mm -hmm. but with it, it gives you different scenes to give you really uh, dynamic feels for your sessions. Yeah. So it gives you more immersive experience. So this is going to integrate completely into that as well. My personal favorite, besides the actual content of the book itself, the two hours worth of soundtrack, mm -hmm. uh, A for you to use in, you know, combat. It's, it's one of those things, it's underrated things. Having good combat music music or like absolutely. scene music is, is absolutely it helps really set the mood yeah it, it, it really does four new subclasses in this book possibly more but it's possibly more. It's but four, four, pl <laughs> four plus more than 50 magic items are in here you got some pre-made characters for those who maybe want to try out this new setting but you mm. maybe you got some new players you know not yeah. sure what they want to do there's options there and then several so many more npcs and monsters and things that help you give some 
variety as it is indeed the spice of life for yes. your D&D game. Absolutely. So don't miss out on this Kickstarter, guys. They have some really cool special editions as well with some sharp edge resin dice, which just look incredible. So yeah, they definitely do. worth checking this out, guys. Yeah. So uh, don't miss out on this one. It's super high quality. Don't let this one slip past you. So that capstone, the Apex Predator, because that's what you are with your 47 <laughs> arms and extra scales and dragon's breath organ in you. Whoa. <laughs> Your knowledge of the anatomy of creatures and yourself allows you to refine your grasp to perfection. Any attack gained from your nature's armament deals an additional 1d8 point of damage. Any DC derived from any graft is increased by 1. Additionally, you may graft 2 additional arms to your body. These do not count towards your normal graft limit amount. Oh my... Lots to be said about that. Yeah, I'm going to leave all the analysis and <laughs> shenanigans in, in mind for the actual scoring part. So yes. with that, we're going to move into that part of the video, starting off with the role play value. Asterisk, as always. Talking about role play, we're talking about interacting with the world around you, interacting with NPCs, non-combat scenarios, avoiding combat, basically things outside of the initiative order. Not talking about your class fantasy, history, lore, background that's on you as a player. We can't rate you, but we can rate the abilities gained and how they might improve your potential in those role play scenarios. Uh-huh. So, jumping into this with the role play, it gets very interesting very quickly. Yeah, it does. So, first of all, you do get proficiency with medicine and reliable talent with it, basically, on top of yep. that. So, medicine checks can be a little bit more on the niche side. They can. But they do come up, and it is nice to have that yeah, one. Spe especially when you're this bad scientist Frankenstein shenanigans going Right. <laughs> it's a good thing that you actually have this. And you do get up to five graphs uh, at once, I should say, because there's more on that. You get yeah. to up to five graphs at once when you hit level 15, is the when you hit the last one. Uh, with that, there are half of these are very clear role play options, which would be the wings for flying, obviously, mm -hmm. the tail for acrobatics and some grabbing things, stuff like that, and then the gills for water breathing and the sensory giving you the bonus to perception mm -hmm. or the extended or new kind of vision added. Mm -hmm. So those of those options, there's some solid ones for role play for sure. Uh, some of them kind of overlap with combat, which makes them a little bit more viable. Like for example, flying is good. All the time, so and it's never that a bad one thing. is never going to be a bad choice to take. The intimidation uh, proficiency is is interesting, or the concealing graphs, both of which are going to give you solid uh, social interactions. Mm -hmm. You get a little bit of that. There's uh, some niche uses with the second wind uh, buff getting two uses, and the conditions yep. being affected as well can sometimes come into play with traps or different puzzles can cause conditions. You yep. know, like vines uh, grab you or whatever, or you know. You, just get paralyzed from staring at some weird statue. Weird stuff happens sometimes, so that can help to have that. And then niche resistances um, can help a little bit with uh, some indirect buff. Mm -hmm. You know, poison is a very common da common damage type, mm -hmm. especially for again traps and things like that. It's pretty pretty common, I would say. And then the extra health can help for you know traps exploration. It's gonna help potentially maybe save a little bit of healing over time from some healers. Uh, having those resistances on top of the extra health. And then, of course, extra, have, just having extra arms. I mean, we've seen people get, do some really interesting stuff with the Thrycreen yeah. uh, new race, but this doesn't have the limitations that that does. Mm -hmm. And on top of that, you could be a Thrycreen Graft Knight and just yeah, be he's, 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 real he said that. crazy. <laughs> la, 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 la. <laughs> real crazy shenanigans <laughs> with all that. That's a DM saying that, just yeah. to say. Yeah, no, I, yeah. I cause so much chaos for myself. It's, he, he does. It's, it's, it's self-inflicted wounds. Mm -hmm. uh, all that being said, the biggest hindrance that we really found with this, especially Alex, really hammered me that hammered me down on some of these things a little. Oh, on this especially, I, I just felt like I was walking around with a needle. He's got a bubble. Oh, yeah, look, <laughs> pop. So yes, the biggest issue with this is one: you have to come across the creatures that have these specific yes. things that you want, mm -hmm. and then two: if you want to stockpile, because you can graft up to five on your body at once, you have a reliable way. To preserve body parts, you could just have a bag full of different things and then yes. you know, take a short rest and swap around your body parts. Yes. Could be done. But you're going to need someone like a cleric or wizard, for example, who has something like gentle repose yeah. or some other way to preserve stuff uh, for that to really be viable. And because of that you know, reliance on another uh, character or yeah, party because member. Because you're not doing it yourself. Yeah, or you know maybe the DM gives you some kind of weird stuff, but with this, just um, salt. You just carry salt rounds to bags. <laughs> so we went with a three and a half out of five, yep. primarily because of that limitation of you have to come across what you need when you want it, yep. 
and it might take a long time, if ever, that you get the thing you specifically that you're looking for, or and and or the option of preserving things to be able to be reused uh, for future use. It does take an hour to swap something out. Right. So if you if you're maxed out and then you really need that those gills because all of a sudden you're at a right. ginormous lake and nobody else has you know swimming or water breathing you're like well <laughs> yeah and, and the other thing too is you have to pick the role play once yes like, you could just go full combat but then if you do that then you're really going to hamper your role play so right. you might want to mix and match a little yeah. bit on the combat side of things this thing gets so bonkers <laughs> it's so so bonkers because, yes, you have got up to five different things that, again, unless your campaign is super heavy RP, you're probably going to have more combat-based ones than RP ones. Or, like I said, you're going to make sure your RP ones have at least some combat value. We all know flying is always a good thing to have. But imagine grabbing the eye of something that has tremor sense. Mm -hmm. You grab a sensory organ, and it doesn't help you. This doesn't give you anything new. You can enhance it. So your dark vision right. goes from 30 to 60 feet. Yeah. Or you could get an extra chance on your perception things, which is more of an RP thing. But again, yeah. I, you using things that maybe lean more toward RP that may still have a function right. for combat. There's yeah. there's again some indirect help on that side of things. The natural armaments letting you attack with both the strength or dexterity mods lets you kind of build yourself how you want to mm -hmm. because of that. So you could go like soup instead of being big bulky thing you could be this weird agile thing with like seven arms cartwheeling around with the tail and all kinds of crazy shenanigans uh, it'd be a great time you're getting extra chances to attack the the damage die is going to scale up if you take multiple arms you're eventually going to get two free arms anyway yep so there is a very likely chance you can have a a short bow in two hands a sword in one hand and a shield in another hands so there's four arms yeah. And, the, and that's not even counting the five graphs because you've got two free arms at this point. Right. So that's just there. Then you can get wings and a tail. And you can also get tough and skin, which gives mm -hmm. you more AC if you want there, or the bones for more health if you want to go heavy into the tankier side of things. And yes, Alex is burying the lead a little bit <laughs> with the breath weapon thing because as someone who his first D&D character and main campaign character is a dragonborn. I love the fact that I have a breath weapon, but this scales up two more times past where, no, three more times, because it's caps out of 5d6. Yeah. So it's, this so. goes all the way up to 8d6, and you even get to pick whether you want the line for the just more range, right? or if you want the water area each cone when you do it in there, so you're not set to one way or the other. Right. And it uses your con yeah, for, the, which, for the save. You're going to get a higher con than every other thing in here, except yeah. for barbarians when they get to 20. Because mm -hmm. your con's going to go up along with your max is going right. to go up as well. And, of course, besides your you know, con going up, you're you're getting additional use of second wind. So mm -hmm. more health, helping you and anybody that might have healing spells, not to worry about you as much. And the bigger thing besides the extra use is your second wind now removes not just one of the conditions, yeah. any and all of the following conditions of blind, deaf, and frightened, paralyzed, poison, and stunned. Just a bunch of conditions to just be willing to just be gone with. Yeah. And finally, when you hit 18, you almost feel like it feels like a weaker version of a paladin capstone because it's not as potent, but it's all the time. Yeah, right. So you're you're taking not quite the crazy potency of paladin and giving it for longer range, mm -hmm. which feels really nice because it's just making all the other things you're getting better. More damage, more AC. Increasing the DC of your effect again, because it's going to go up from your constitution going up. Again, the only limitations on this is what Jameson already said, is finding what you need, being able to preserve it, finding you know what you want. That's it. That's the only reason this thing comes down a little bitty bit to a four and a half out of a five. Yeah. It's, it's incredibly potent, I think. And with it, you have utility to build it in the way you want. Yeah. As well, and it just it has so much internal synergy. I think it does. Which speaking of synergy, oh, whoa, let's move right on from that. <laughs> whoa, which yes, it does have lots of synergy with the graphs themselves. Obviously, as you get higher level, you get more of them. Mm -hmm. If you have ways to preserve them, you can swap them on and off. Yep. change them for the situations you need. Though you do have to have an hour to do so. You do. Uh, you do get extra utility with it. The breath weapon, I think, too, it, it is very solid and it has the con mm -hmm. uh, proficiency, plus you get to increase your max con. Normally, plus, constitution modifiers aren't that great, but you get to raise your DC up 
two different times. Yeah, so it'll cap out at a twenty. Yeah. <laughs> it's freaking huge. Yeah, so it's a good it's a good DC for the breath weapon. I, I think the thing to keep in mind too, though, with that to kind of bring you back down to earth a little bit, is you are a fighter and action surge is a thing, and you're level eighteen. So and you, if you take an extra natural armament, you get extra attack. So you couldn't have actually five attacks uh, instead of four with the regular fighter. Yep. Um, so there and is that. Surge. Plus action shirt. So ten attacks. Yep. Yes, they're going to be against one thing. Probably you could do ten attacks against one thing, or you know the range. You could hit some, you know, different some, things. Some spray distance. if you wanted to. Or do a, a, a breath weapon in a near cone. So yep. obviously, damage wise, it'll be interesting. Depending if you could hit three, like three things, it's probably going to do more often on the breath yep. weapon. But if you're only hitting two things. You know, you're dealing a lot because you have to get to add your modifier on top of all those attacks yeah. as well. So it, it is yeah. similar and comparable damage. Sure. So it's not, it, it's great by by uh, all means, but it's not insane. <laughs> yeah, it was, I mean, it does take your action versus, you know, so it's, it's very close. Sure. It's on that line. It's looking right at that line. Like, I see you. I'm about to jump over you. I'm just thinking about it right now. Yeah, and you get that extra survivability depending if you go with the extra AC from the graft and you get the extra health from the, the class features. And then a second wind, second second wind, you know, because all that is going to help you stay more in the fight. Second, and again, second. the capstone, it's going to give you uh, in internal offensive and defensive buffs because, as we were saying, if you even if you just have four arms and you just have, yeah. you know, even if you don't add an extra arm for the natural armament, you just, in, you know, improve your natural arm, um, giving, mm-hmm. you know, some claws or something. You still, even if you only have four arms, that's what I'm trying to say. Oh, only. You still have, again, you know, your two lower arms could hold a short bow with a knocked arrow all the time. So then your upper arms could hold, you know, your claw weapon thing because you yeah. get an extra buff to that. Yep. And then a shield. Yep. So you're going to get a buff to your AC. I don't know why if you have four arms you wouldn't at least have a shield. Uh, you pretty you, much, there's you no better. reason not to. You better. If you're a Thrykreen or something, then you're just going to have, you know, at minimum six arms. Yep. So you it's, definitely it's, have room for that. Like... What what do you even do with six arms? You just you have a bunch of hand crossbows without taking crossbow master. <laughs> you don't have to. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, it's a shotgun. Just boom. Yeah, sure. <laughs> so yeah, there's lots of weird stuff, especially if you're creative too, which you can do with all those kind of arms and some RP and weird stuff too. All that being said, we, we've kind of gone over all these things several times already, so I'm just yeah. gonna get right to it. Four and a half out of five as well yeah. in this energy again. Yeah. That lingering issue is yeah. the only thing. It, it rolls over into all three things yeah. because acquiring you're, what you need and preserving the, yeah. thing, the reserves. Mm-hmm. So it, it does have a little bit of hamper, but I mean, at level eighteen, you know, by the time you're capped out, there's probably going to be some ways you, to preserve it should, some things. It should be very reliable by that point. But it is eighteen, so it's one of those things we bring any time. If you're getting at stuff, it's getting into that mid and high. You know, double figures there, and level. Some campaigns don't get that high, so it's important to right. keep that in mind. I will say one thing too that I appreciate that's really well done about this is it isn't just like you get everything at once, right? Yeah. Because you get a good start with the graphs at yeah. level three. Yeah. And then level seven, you don't really get anything. You get you get two role play things, and you get to get an extra graft. So yeah. you get like two things off the bat. Level seven, you get a little something. Level ten is when it starts getting a little bit better, I think. Yeah. With the you get the extra second win, but again, that's not like crazy. It's really nice yeah. to have. You get extra second win, and it makes it better. You also get another graph, so it's like you get a little thing here, a little thing here, a yeah. little thing here. It kind of like spoon yeah. feeds you, and then the, the the top end, you're like, now we're cooking. Yeah. With gas, you know. Yeah. So, well, once you get to fifteen, and that DC that is going up, graph. and you get that extra health, you get the damage resistance, and you get yeah, yeah. So fifteen and eighteen feel you. It's huge. You jumps. feel peaked for sure. Yeah. But yeah, I, I do like the, the way that kind of gradually scales because it yeah. feels like you're getting stuff constantly, right? For sure. So like that again, guys. Uh, really interesting, unique. Number one rule I've said it in so many of our subclass videos. Anytime you're putting in a new subclass to the you know, 120 official ones, not counting all the unofficial stuff that's out there, you gotta find a way to stand out, be unique, create right. some unique options. Frankenstein fighter definitely sticks out. <laughs> it's a unique option. Absolutely. So with that, we'll just cut it here, guys. Uh, yeah, if you enjoyed the video, don't forget to like, subscribe, hit the bell notifications so you know when all of our new videos are coming out. Don't forget to check out the Lore of Aethera Kickstarter. Yeah. Definitely one you don't want to miss out on. For sure. Your high quality stuff. So yeah, check this them out. This is just one. Yeah. Of at least four subclasses yeah, link, in there. Link down below for that. And if, sure. if that's an any sign of what what to expect in the rest of the book in terms of subclasses goes. Absolutely. Color me intrigued. <laughs> Absolutely. So link down below for that. Check them out. 
And as always, guys, thanks for watching.